Yeah, right, guys. My name's Piers Tellemach, and I'm president of Bradford College Student Union. We're creating a short film, thanks to the help of Kyoto HTV. <laughs> Big respect, James. We're creating a short documentary to talk about why the people of Bradford are upset, angry, offended, and disgusted that a group like the EDL, the English Defence League, want to come to our city, our city, our home, our community to spread racial hatred and cause community tensions. So the purpose of the documentary is to talk about, explore how people of Bradford feel about a group like this coming to a place like Bradford. To talk about what's being done on the lead up to the EDL. So what groups are doing to kind of combat, combat the EDL and promote multiculturalism. And also to talk about what impact a group like the EDL has when they come to Bradford. So what did we do about it? We sat down and we met with groups of students talking about the issue, trying to get their thoughts and feeling and we come up with a series of different campaigns. So the first element was a poster campaign. So this here is our poster. Playing on a British icon, uh, the, the traditional British saying, keep calm and stand together. So it usually says keep calm and carry on and ours says keep calm, stand together. The English Defence League are a racist um, and they're planning to bring their hatred and racism to Bradford on the 12th of October. The EDL want to divide us and whip up racial hatred between our communities. This is the last thing Bradford needs. Um, the second element, chalk. So what we decided to do was that we wanted to spread a message and we wanted to make it a visual message. We wanted the people of Bradford to know um, the facts in relation to Black History Month, it's October, Black History Month, the time when you celebrate multiculturalism um, and sort of celebrate what other cultures are brought to England. So the idea started when we were going to cover the college campus in Black History related facts and when I found out the EDL were coming, I thought it's about time we take this off campus. So we decided that tonight, um, the night before the EDL come, me and a big group of students are going to go out and we're going to cover the town centre in um, facts. So the kind of arguments that the EDL have used to justify their racist beliefs. So when the EDL say immigrants are overrunning the NHS, we say immigrants are overrunning the NHS, immigrants run the NHS. Because without all the migrant workers, you think about last time you went to the hospital, tell me how many of them were non-white British. Exactly. Um, the sec third element is these ribbons. Last time the EDL came to Bradford when they got humiliated because Bradford turned their back on them. The, um, a group called um, Bradford Women for Peace got together and decided that they wanted to create a physical presence and a visual presence around Bradford and decided to put these little peace ribbons and still to this day you'll see these ribbons on trees, in parks, um, on benches and that's three years later. So we're here, we're outside um, Bradford College and we're covering the campus in these ribbons. Um, in 2010, last time the EDL came, Bradford Women for, um, for Peace came together and we decided to show a visual um, peace symbol that we were against the EDL. So we covered Bradford in these ribbons, so we just give them a hand, we're covering the college campus, we're covering the city centre, um, we're just showing solidarity and working together with the Women for Peace. So when you see these hanging about, you know what they're for. Yep. I've been here since 2004 and the reason I came to Bradford was that I wanted to work in a truly multicultural city. Bradford has always welcomed people from many places across the world over the years and so there are lots of opportunities for communities to work in harmony in this city. I think that Bradford College plays a major role in providing those safe spaces where students and staff can learn together from each other's cultures and backgrounds, which provides us with the rich diversity of learning experience that Patrick College provides. So, for the purpose of this video, you guys are going to have to pretend you've made this, yeah? We have made it. Right, don't worry. Uh, what we'll do is, we're just going to get a bit of footage, so the chef's going to just take, take James round and show him what, what the food is and why you melt out. Let's do some nice on your bag. <laughs> Just um, testing the... Uh, Rising right food. Right food. Yeah man, this chicken's good.
mist uppers. So we've got some, uh, this one is, let's see what that one is. So that's the uh, Oache, which is not cooked yet, and that's the uh, Ghanaian uh, prawns. It's got prawns in it, it's got uh, chickpeas in it, spinach in it, garlic, ginger, onions. And we mix it all together, blend it, mix it together, and then steam it into a shape and then turn it out. Okay? And that's served with the jollof rice, which is here. So that's tomato and chilli rice, just, just cooking that out there, you can see that there, that's the jollof rice, okay, and the jollof rice is also going with the moi moi, which is from Nigeria, so this is a black eyed peas, black eyed peas with chilli, tomato, onions, uh, and some other seasoning in there as well. So that's the same sort of thing as the oache. Some sushi, sushi with soy sauce and obviously the chopsticks. Got seaweed around it. No, <laughs> no raw fish, it's smoked salmon inside or cucumber, no raw fish. So this is overcooked rice. Get some wetted hands and roll the rice into a bowl make a hole in it and then put some spicy lamb in. The lamb's got lots of pepper in it, okay? place where we all want to be together and unless we do that then we have a disparate society and that's no good for anyone. Well I think what it's about is understanding um, other than yourself. I think uh, as part of, of growing up, as part of your education in life, um, if you live the smaller the circle that you live within, the narrower your views are going to be and the danger is the more prejudiced and bigoted you're going to be. I live in Bingley and I come to town on a sunny day on a sunny day in the summertime. I sit by the pond, the, the, um, the lovely new pond there with the fountains, with my kids, and I've got an Asian person on that side, a Polish person on that side, and we all rub along lovely. And when I stand here now today, day before EDL come, and you've got all the people from Bradford stood together, the council, the cops, everyone saying we just want a quiet life, leave us alone. It's good for us, isn't it? It's a, it's a good place to be. Multiculturalism is important because it allows all of us to work together and together, because it's more of us, we're united. And I think that really makes Bradford a much stronger place and that's how we can deal with the EDL. Okay? It's because of multiculturalism that Bradford can actually deal with the EDL. Come here. Why is multiculturalism important? Cut. Well, 
Well, I think it's uh, everybody's got a right to exist, haven't they? And you just treat everybody equally. They're good people and bad people and all sides of things. And uh, that's the way I look at it. Good people, bad people. Yeah, so basically we're denouncing the EDL, it says keep calm and stand together. It says a little bit about the organisation saying the racists and fascists. And the message we're trying to get across is that people Bradford need to like I said, keep calm and stand together and not rise to it. That's true. Um, so we just stood in front of um, the peace wall. So the purpose of the peace wall is to visually represent all the people in Bradford who oppose the EDL, showing the strength of the community, showing unity in the community and showing solidarity and basically sending a message to the EDL that they're not wanted in our city. Um, so a bit of boss time here, Bradford College got over 1,000 of those um, peace postcards on there. So I'm saying we can take credit for about a third of them cards on there. I think the main purpose has been the EDL are coming to town tomorrow. And a lot of people in this city wanted to show that we could have a dignified response and a peaceful response, but a very clear response uh, to the EDL. That we don't tolerate racism, we don't, we're not going to allow them to come to our town and divide us. We're not going to stand for any of their racism, for their Islamophobia. We're not going to fall for any of the provocations. We're, gonna, we're Bradford together and that's Bradfordians of all backgrounds and that we can be peaceful, we can reject their messages and we can all come together and have a laugh because it's a lot better than coming together and not. So we're doing quite well in terms of getting us posters all over Bradford City Centre, so we're just going to call in here and ask him if he's sorry if we can put some posters in, man. Yeah, right, love, sorry to bother you. We're just creating a short documentary about the effects of EDL. Is it all right if we put these posters in? Cool, um, are you opening up tomorrow? And what? You're not letting them in, sorry? I'm not letting them in, EDL. Because they wrecked place last time. So, so EDL won't be able to drink here. Brilliant, cool. So we're going to put some of these up in shop. Yeah, nice one. Okay, well it's important in Bradford because um, we live in a multicultural society, there's no avoiding that and it's something to be celebrated and to, and to take advantage of. Uh, in the college uh, where I work, uh, we've got a very diverse uh, population, we've got lots of different types of staff and students from all over different uh, countries in the world and from different communities within Bradford. Cool, <laughs> we'll get one of these in. <laughs> Oh, maybe. I've got one from three years ago. No, I was on about the t <laughs> what about the Facebook. <laughs> I on about I thought you were showing me the river. <laughs> because it's the times we live in. It, it's a it's a growing world. We've got to live in respect and uh, treat each other with respect, no matter that, about our backgrounds and where we come from. We've got to live in harmony. Definitely. Absolutely. So we're just going around town trying to get as many posters up. Um, it's the night before the EDL come. Um, a lot of Bradford people seem to be very, very concerned. Um, on one hand, we've got the council saying carry on as usual, but how can we carry on when not only people are scared to come into their own city, but people are going to have issues with getting in with transport because of the diversions of the buses, etc. But don't worry, um, the battle continues. Multiculturalism is either an ideology or it's a statement of reality. Multiculturalism says you have different cultures living alongside each other, uh, integrating with each other, learning from each other, sometimes rubbing off each other. I mean, let's not minimise there are challenges that come with this, but there are with the whole of life and with any society. So um, in Bradford, and especially what we're doing today, what we're saying is um, we're not going to have our ground occupied by people who run a different narrative. This is our space.
just have to look around. Um, you know, Bradford and the UK were built on multiculturalism, going back hundreds if not thousands of years. And I think there have always been people who have tried to exploit the, exploit the differences between communities, but by and large the strength and the vitality that having a multicultural society brings I think makes Bradford a greater city and makes the UK a great place to live. So we're in the inside of the enclosure where the EDL are going to be kept tomorrow in the march. Um, if you want to take a look around this is where the police are hoping to contain um, the EDL. So what we're doing, we're armed with chalk, armed with chalk, we're armed with chalk and we're writing messages on the floor. Messages um, that the EDL use as justification for their racist and fascist views around immigration. So such facts like um, less than 14,000 Polish actually claiming incapacity, whereas if you ask a lot of people they say it were a, lot, a lot much more. I think you've got to look around you. Uh, uh, we're at this celebration of Bradford, which is a multicultural place, and I think a very diverse city where uh, communities, uh, uh, different faith communities, different age groups, people from all backgrounds are stood around you here celebrating the great district. And actually, it shows how people, you know, that may not agree with everything in life, can come together and have the district as a central place and have common ground to talk about. And that's why I think in modern Britain, it's absolutely crucial. been multicultural, you know, we've had the, the Celts, the Anglo-Saxons, the Huguenots, you know, we've got Little Germany in Bradford. Um, it's, this isn't a new thing. It, and a, every incursion of people enriches us, you know. I mean, look, Bradford is like the capital, the curry capital of the world. You know, curry is now a British dish. You know, and you know, and long may it be so. That's the way. That's the way we are. You know, and uh, um, Lord, I I and I say, God willing, is making a huge contribution to the city. The people coming from different backgrounds, different uh, enrichment of their culture, they are making a contribution to the heritage of Bradford. And you can see it's quite visible here actually, that we had uh, a couple of months back, we had a Bollywood carnival. And I have now, that was became an international hit to it. And that highlights actually is a contribution to what the culture is making uh, to the Bradford and, and the, and the uh, country as a whole.
There's loads of us here today. Our aim is to write positive messages on the floor so when the EDL come they see this and they think twice about what they're doing. We're all Brathodians and we don't want those fascists in our town. So we're having such good fun creating such a good message and I've got to say that the best bit about this whole experience was when we had groups of people walking through there grabbing pieces of chalk and writing their own messages from some 70 year old white woman right through to some young Asian girls. It just shows the fact that Bradford is united, Bradford is against the EDL and we will not be divided. feelings about today well I, I wish it wasn't first of all I wish it wasn't happening I mean as far as I'm concerned I don't welcome people coming into the town provoking the responses that are potentially there to be provoked but I hope that the calls for unity and peace amongst all the people that started yesterday continue today and that everybody stays calm and there's layers and layers of police um, you know, what are we going to do? Have three or four pints, shout a bit, and then get on the train and go home. You know, it's a, what a waste of time. Right, so we just come up to chat to a young group of lads, um, asking them what the thoughts and feelings are about the EDL. What impact do you think a group like the EDL will have on Bradford? It's caused more You're violence. Like more, more violence. More violence. Cause more violence in this uh, city, more man. We don't want violence here, you know what I mean? We live in a happy city where we all live together. We don't need no racism, we're here, brown, white, blacks, we all live together as a family. No racism. We don't need no fascist school. No racism. <laughs> That's what Bradford is. Bradford is an international country in one city. Yes. And we yeah, all man. live here together as a family. We stand together united. And we Allah don't need Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. <laughs> so what do you think of a way that the police of Bradford, uh, people of Bradford are being policed opposed to the people of EDL? I think it's pretty disgusting the way we're being policed. Um, if you look over there, they've got one line, um, whereas we've got a couple of lines here, we've got a mounted section. Um, it's totally disgraceful. End of the day, we at Bradford should be allowed to walk freely in our city. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to listen to me, okay, you gathered here together for a cause, for a reason. If it's not being explained to you already, there were conditions imposed under section 14 of the Public Order Act. I'm asking you now, please. Get some footage. You got my arm. This is the first police I've ever seen. So the police are aggravating these young people right about now. We were just getting a, just a short clip about young people's thoughts, what they feel about the situation, and all one lad said was that Bradford is a multicultural city full of blacks, whites and browns, and the police try and aggravate them, try and intimidate them, and try and provoke them by telling them to move, and now we've just caused a little bit of disruption all down to the police and the tactics that they're using. Not moving, man. No, try to get us. Why? There's members of the. We're going to put a line on. What? I don't get this in video. Why the. Why? I... No, man, no. This is. Why? 
Why are the horses coming down and trying to intimidate the people of Bradford? People of Bradford are here just concerned about what's going on and the police are trying to aggravate us. Look at the horses. Look at no this this is man. In it, man, what the f I know, I know. Outside is coming into our city. Yes. Section 14 in post, okay. The conditions are that you're not supposed to be in this area, this is a sterile area for the protest. Hang on a minute, this, the city park is a sterile area. Well, you're going to the city park? No, not these You can't stay here, it's either that way. Where you can't, you can't just pick and choose where, where your sterile areas are going to be. We can't, we can't. Lee, I'm going to give you a note, I have to speak to you again, you might have to. For what? For I'm going to give you a notice explaining what sterile area it is in this section. Well, as far as I'm aware, I'm not trying to cause an argument, but... Listen, listen, I'm not here to argue, I'm just giving you the last opportunity to either go that way or that way. OK, no problem. Yeah, because you've just moved everybody off for no yeah, reason. That's, that's, that's the reason Right, well, we're going up that way then. We're going to go up that way, if that's all right. Go that way then. The thing that struck us is the city's come to a standstill today and it's affecting businesses, people and creating division because they're built on hate for guys like you and I, you know, black and white unite. They don't want this. They want, you know, they are fascists and they want to create fascism and we are absolutely here to have a peaceful presence but we will be heard. This is Barry, I've just spotted him in the crowd here. We used to be my politics tutor at Bradford College. Barry, what are your thoughts? Um, we've an estimated 1.5 million of taxpayers' money gone on sort of policing this event. Well, it's a ridiculous amount to be spent sort of policing a bunch of racists coming in to cause trouble in Bradford. In Tower Hamlets, the council and the local Labour Party and all the trades unions all decided to get together to stop the EDL going into Tower Hamlets and they weren't allowed into Tower Hamlets. So I'm just wondering why the Bradford Council hasn't done the same thing here. So the people of Bradford are stood here peacefully, um, talking about the effect and impact that the EDL are having. And more and more, the police keep trying to push us further and further away. Now these are the kind of tactics that the police use to intimidate and instill fear in people who are trying to promote good. Now what we've just seen is um, talking to a group of about 10 young Asian lads, asking them what they thought about um, the fact that EDL were coming to Bradford. And all they were doing was said black, brown, white, whatever, we all stand together. And the police started pushing them, moving them on, and then chased them with horses up the street. Now tell me how that's going to solve anything. Um, so why are you here today in Bradford? Um, because I think it's important that the people of Bradford uh, show the EDL that they're not welcome here. Um, what impact do you think a group like the EDL have on a place like Bradford? Um, what they're trying to do is, di is to divide the people of Bradford and we don't want to be divided. Um, what, what they intend to do when they, when they come here, they tend, intend to stir up trouble. If they could, they'd, get, they'd go to the Asian areas and they'd, they'd attack people and businesses. They've done it before in other towns. Right, so about five minutes ago we just witnessed the police um, chasing these guys for no reason. We were talking to them, asking them about what their thoughts were about the EDL and all they actually said was that Bradford was multiculturalism. Then the police came and chased them. So what are your thoughts on what the police just did to you then, guys? That's not I right. thought this was a free country. Right. I, uh, I, I thought the public, public servants, they're not the public servants. They're the public's enemies. That's what they are. Did it make you feel scared? When yeah. They did yeah. Yeah. No fear, no fear. Yeah. Yeah. One, one at a time, one at a time. Women and children in their homes who are scared to come out of, of because of fascist comes like that. We need to stand united. We're just standing there. Is you know free world. You can do what you want. And the couples are chasing right, us off. Right. We're not the main problem. They're, they're all men. They had about five, six horses. Just you know, they're coming up to us, telling us to move back. Oh, no, no, no. EDL are swearing at us. No one's chasing them out. We just come down here. Five of the horses move back now before I whack you with the stick. They said What's what? The hills with the stick. The police said they'll hit yeah. with the stick. Yeah. The hills with the stick. 
they've, they've got sticks on the horses. We'll hit you with the stick if you, if you don't move out of the way. And what did you do to Wickham say we'll hit you with a stick? When they said we'll hit you with a stick, we, we thought, right, road. leave it. We crossed the road, they started chasing us. You've got to get kettled. Listen, listen, guys, listen. I need, you to, I need you to take these guys because you're coming yeah, 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 to the target. Post streets! 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 So, as lo local shopkeepers of Bradford, what are your thoughts and feelings about today? It's really, it's really sad. Um, you know, that they've come here and uh, it's been really quiet all morning and afternoon as well. And what effect did you think that's had on your business to take in today? Really big effect. No one's coming all day, and uh, you know we're having to pay for this. You know, Saturday's meant to be our busiest day of the week, and uh, it's just, you know, just stupid. Just, uh, I mean, the, the council they shouldn't have let them in. You know, but it's just, uh, just don't understand why it was done. You know, they know Bradford's, you know, majority of people in Bradford are Asians. And uh, it's just, I mean, we're having to pay for this. Mm. We're having to, you know, suffer. So we've got these two ladies here who've been handed out these green ribbons for peace. Um, so, guys, how are the people of Bradford being receptive to the green ribbons you've been handing out? Have you handed out many? Oh, yes. Seven, yeah, six or seven kilometres of ribbon. Wow. Yeah, we bought, we bought seven and a half kilometres and that's what's left. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we didn't buy them. Last time round we bought them, this time round the council bought them for us. Oh, that's good. It is, it's really good. So, I would, do you think people are sort of getting the message of the green ribbons? Oh, I think Yes, so, yeah. oh definitely. I think, um, you know, if you just stand with the ribbons now, people are coming up saying, can I have one? Can I take one from a friend? Can I take one from my sister? Um, yeah. So it's been really good. Yeah, last yeah. time we had to do a lot of explaining and persuading people. You can do something, you know, wear the ribbon, it will show you don't want all of this. But this time it's just been, oh yeah, sure, great, good luck. Uh, my name's Bilal, I'm from Bradford 3. Cool. Uh, my name's Israel, I'm from Bradford 5. Yeah. And what's the purpose of the event down at Urban Gardens? Uh, the purpose of the event is, is basically it's an anti-protest for the EDL to, uh, uh, as, um, to say basically that they're not welcome in Bradford and that nobody's actually happy with them being here. Um, which is really what it is. I mean, most of Bradford isn't really happy with the uh, racist people coming here. Uh, my personal views, to be honest with you, I don't have a problem with the EDL going anywhere. I believe that everybody should have their, their, their you know, the right to speak their mind. Um, however, when that right is then abused and you walk around sort of swearing at people's uh, religious figures, you know, their gods or their their races, etc. I believe that's where the lines sort of gets crossed and brown, brown boundaries are sort of blurred. <laughs> Alright, so this is George Galloway, um, MP for Bradford West. Um, so George, why are you here today? Well, first of all, I'm here to express my anger at the one million pounds cost the taxpayers. Neo-Nazis who came here for an entirely illegal purpose to cause fear and alarm and to whip up racial and religious hatred. One million pounds, total disruption to the local economy. On the weekend before the Muslim festival of Eid, and that anger has to be channeled to the government. I've spent the last few weeks trying to persuade the Home Secretary to ban this and to persuade the Chief Constable to ask for it to be banned. I didn't what response did you get? They, they wouldn't do so because it's a static protest rather than a march. And they say that their legal advice is you can only ban a static protest if the organization is proscribed. So I believe we have now reached the point where we have to grasp the nettle of proscribing the so-called English, so-called Defence League. ...of my constituents at the waste of one million pounds of public money to police a small group of fascists who have descended from across the land on the great city of Bradford. One million pounds wasted in a city crying out at all levels for public expenditure and public support 
for useful purposes has been burned in the massive police presence which has been made necessary by the decision of the so-called English, so-called Defence League to descend yet again upon a community that doesn't want them. The purpose of the so-called English, so-called Defence League's presence here is an entirely illegal presence and an illegal purpose. Why? The only reason for the existence of this group is to stir up racial and religious hatred in the land. A purpose which is explicitly illegal. Hey, uh, my name is Zacharias and I am the Blacksmiths Officer at the University of Bradford and I am also the NUS, uh, member of the NUS Blacksmiths Campaign Committee. And, um, well, at least I'm here. One of the reasons why I came here to this uh, celebratory event, We Are Bradford, is of course to celebrate multiculturalism, to celebrate diversity in this, in this, in this, in this country and in the city. And of course to strengthen the unity that our people have and everyone has in this city and to make sure that fascist, racist, extremist, right-wing ideologies, practices and principles are not welcome in Bradford. I'm just a bit curious why a uh, family, a peaceful event, the police feel the need to kind of surround us as if we're the ones doing anything wrong. The people are doing things wrong. And those guys up there, the EDL members, just take a look how many police are about. Leave us to fight each other without coming to the realisation that the tactic they use by those in power to divide and conquer different communities, religions and races. We must stand together, unite as one, stop fighting each other and because they're one, we need to rise up and stand strong, make our voices heard, hold them peace to account and make sure they fight for the policies that are going to benefit those that they represent. Because if they don't, in 2015 at the general election, their sins, they will rep repent. So so we've got Umar Rafiq here, Vice President of Bradford College Students' Union. Umar, how do you think the students at Bradford College that you represent have reacted to today? Uh, the students have reacted very well, they stayed calm and they haven't, you know, caused any violence or anything as opposed to what the EDL are here to do. And I've got one simple message for the EDL is that they don't have no stake in Bradford and uh, I just want them to stop wasting taxpayers' money and sign on to a peace and harmony course and get back on the M606 and go where they belong. What's your name bro and how come you're in Bradford today? Mohammed Adam and I live in Bradford, born and bred, always have been, never leave this place, hometown. How come you're here today? Just to represent the Muslims because the way that the EDL discriminate us is it's unbelievable. There's good and bad in every pe person, every culture, every race. It, that's the way it is, isn't it? Now a few people have been pointing us in your direction to say you've got a bit of a talent, say you can rap or something. Ah, yeah. Is that true? Yeah, I used to be an MC. I do, I, I do a spoken poetry about Islam now. Before I used to do uh, songs like uh, In the Back of My Car. <laughs> Do you want to give us a bit of uh, spark of poetry? Go on, go on. Well, um, go on. Islam is my religion, so please will you listen? It was my own decision, now I'm crying with submission. Whether you're an Asian, black or Caucasian, doesn't matter about your nation, no frustration in frustration. Being yeah. a Muslim is my fate, I'm glad it happened, could have been too late. Allah, work, but Allah's great with all his might, he did create. The world we live in today, our bodies so we can pray, our mouths so we can say, Allahumma salli alayh. So it's 20 past 3 now, um, and to say that EDL thought that this was going to be a big one, it don't look like it's been a big one to me. The people of Bradford, are rightly so, have not reacted to the EDL's direct provocations of the people of Bradford. If you take a look up there, they're nowhere to be seen. We've seen a lot of them getting on uh, the coaches to go home, and there's still a lot of police about. I still think it's a waste of taxpayers' money, all these police still being about, but by the looks of it, most of the EDL people have gone home. So, as you can see, the people of Bradford are going back to their normal daily lives and hopefully this can all be forgotten. But if we've all got one message from this is that no matter who comes to Bradford, spreading what kind of message, Bradford will not be divided. And pigeons get that shit on the ear. <laughs> I will be